is Daniel Shear and welcome to Mr. Shear's Classroom. Today we're going to have a little introduction into the Coriolis effect. To understand the Coriolis effect, we first need to understand that winds are generated due to temperature differences on the surface of the Earth. These differences in temperature come about for a number of reasons. The ones relative to this discussion are how long the sun shines and the angle the sun is striking the Earth. You may have noticed that the sun is up longer at certain times of the year and shorter at others, but there's always one area that gets 12 hours of sunlight each day and always has a relatively high sun angle on average. That area is the equator. This characteristic has definite effect on the climate in this area. The above average heating causes the air to warm much more than in other areas, and as you probably know, warm air rises causing a circular wind pattern called a Hadley cell. The Hadley cell is what causes the upper level winds to blow towards the poles and the lower level winds to return to the equator. We can see that in this diagram. There's no arrow here but you can imagine that the wind or the up currents are traveling up here and then circling around towards the north and then back towards the equator at the lower levels. And the exact opposite happens in the southern hemisphere that the upper winds tend to move towards the pole and then back north to the equator. Here we see a cross section of these cells and we can see the uplifting of the warmer moist air uh, causing an above average rainfall in the equatorial areas. Due to the fact that the warm air at the surface can hold a lot of moisture and it cools on the way up it gets to a situation where it cannot retain all that moisture so some of it falls back to the earth. Then the drier air moves away from the equator and subsides, uh, returns to the surface at around 30 degrees north uh, latitude from the equator. Notice that there are some jet stream pockets where winds can travel uh, in excess of 100 miles an hour. That's kind of an interesting phenomenon uh, there. It's also very important for weather patterns. All right, now let's put a twist on it. The Earth is moving, or more specifically, the Earth is turning. If the Earth were not turning, this cycle would cause the low-level winds to blow cool air, dry air, cool dry air from the polar latitudes to the equator, and the upper-level winds from the equator to the poles. But the Earth is, in fact, moving, and this causes a distortion of these winds, kind of a deflection that occurs in a very predictable way. Here we see the upper level winds of the Hadley cell being deflected and coming from the west. You can imagine that the lower level winds, winds would be returning at an angle back to the equator making almost a circle as I'm showing here with the mouse. These circulation patterns give rise to the global wind patterns including easterlies, westerlies, trade winds, and doldrums. Early sailors were aware of these patterns and used them to drive their ships to new lands in the hopes of discovering new trade routes, hence their name, trade winds. Here we can see the warmer air indicated in red, and as it rises and forms the westerly upper winds, when it subsides and comes back, it kind of gets dragged along the rotating earth, and this, this causes this kind of circular pattern to be deflected a little bit, and changes it instead of uh, running a straight up and down it's kind of slanted and causes these trade winds to circle back at an angle towards the equator. The combined effect makes for a rather complicated system of air currents across the entire planet and explains why storm systems spin in opposite directions depending on whether you are in the northern or southern hemisphere. These general wind patterns set up by solar heating and the Coriolis effect also have a dramatic impact on surface ocean currents. These ocean currents and global wind current patterns distribute heat energy along with moisture across the planet. Many areas on the planet depend on these patterns to maintain food supplies, crops, and their temperate climates. Disruptions in these patterns can lead to long period anomalies like ice ages, and hot ages where both polar ice caps can disappear, and shorter anomalies like El Nino and La Nina. 
Contrary to popular belief, the Coriolis effect is not responsible for toilets, tubs, or sinks draining in a particular direction. Short-term phenomena like sinks draining, toilets flushing, and even tornadoes are not affected significantly by the Coriolis effect. While hurricanes, typhoons, ocean currents, and believe it or not, long-range artillery and super-long sniper shots are affected by the Coriolis effect. So while we may never answer the question as to whether the toilet seat should be left up or left down, we can say that how the water flushes is largely due to the design of the toilet itself and not the Coriolis effect. The next time someone tries to impress you by dropping the term Coriolis effect, you can set them straight. Thanks for watching, and if you appreciate the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up on the like button. Be sure to subscribe as more buttons will be coming up soon. Thanks again for watching. And I'll see you next time.